The theme of this year's annual Diocesan Appeal is our call to know, love, and serve God. I invite you into the lives of one of our deacons and his wife and the ways in which they know, love, and serve our Lord through the ministries which they offer to all of us. So we met in Macomb. I was working on my master's. Marianne was working on her bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And I would describe, from my perspective, it was love at first sight. Uh, Well, my perspective was different. (laughs) I had already discerned um, that I wanted to enter marriage. So for me, a date was more like an interview. And one of my first questions was, How many children do you have? From the very beginning, we were open to children, but we were very poorly formed. And then Pope John Paul II came to a cornfield in Iowa in 1979. He was saying mass. I just happened to come in and hear the homily that each and every act of married love must be open to children. And I made my decision on that spot to conform my life to the teachings of the church. And she really lovingly worked with me to help me understand the truth of what true married love is. We decided to embrace the church's teaching for married love and to embrace natural family planning. So in this adventure of how many children we're gonna have, we'll know when we get there, we ended up with nine children over approximately 20 years. Being married the way God has envisioned marriage to be, it really did become a great marriage because it's no longer us loving with our human abilities, but it is allowing God to love through us. And it has created a really strong and vibrant love. We have worked for years in the diocesan pre-Cana program where we facilitate workshops with couples who are approaching marriage to just share our experiences and to share the church's truth about what marriage is and what married love is. It has been as rewarding for us as I believe it's been for the students in our our programs. Well, it also helps to have thick skins because (laughs) we're not always the most popular people when we do the Christian sexuality workshop and proclaim the truth. There are those evaluations you get where you just feel like you've had a rotten tomato thrown at you. (laughs) (laughs) But then we have evaluations where people have indicated that it's really transformed not only their relationship with each other, but their relationship with God. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons we keep doing it. So having made the, the decision to be a deacon didn't make me one. The formation at the time we went through is four years, I believe it's five now. It truly is best described as formation. It helped us to discern whether, in fact, we were called to the diaconate. And so it was a, a, an opportunity for us to explore our faith, to explore God's call to us in our faith, both as a deacon and then also the support that Marianne would need to provide for the diaconate to work. And through that process, through the formation, we did discern. I've talked about you know, the fact that we've each been given gifts that we give back to God. And to me, the most clear place is at offertory at the Mass. It's not only the bread and the wine, which will become the very body and blood of Christ we bring, but we give them ourselves. And that's one of the reasons I think it's so important that we regularly go to Mass, to be able to say to God, here I am, take what you will, and make of it what you will. And just like that ordinary bread and wine become the very body and blood of Christ, those meager gifts that we bring forward, God will take and use them in tremendous ways. When I write my homilies, I rarely say to people, this is what my homily is gonna be, because it always changes. And where it changes is in the Adoration Chapel, through being present to the Eucharistic Lord and just offering Him my voice. I can actually say when I do get up and preach, that it really is the Word of God. So in addition to having our nine kids at the house, there was a point in time where we also had a young woman from China, from Beijing. She was a foreign exchange student. She was a foreign exchange student. She was with us a couple of years. And I always used to kid her. I said, you know, if my work ever takes me to China, I'll look up your parents. (laughs) Well, my work did end up taking me to China. We got a a horse tour of the city, and then he had scheduled us to go to Mass in the cathedral. So we're sitting in the Starbucks, it's about an hour, hour and a half till Mass, and through a translator, 
uh, Jin Ying's father says, tell me about God. And so I said, well, what we believe is God is love. He created us out of love for love. Again, through the translator, the father said, I know that by the way you've treated my daughter. And when I heard that from him, you know, I was blown away. You know, when I think about my friends in China and how they hunger for God and the, the very, very few resources they have to learn about God, I really realized how blessed we are in America, especially through the work that happens in the parishes and the work that happens through the diocese. And I think that is why I'm so supportive of the diocesan appeal is because that is our opportunity for us to know God, to love God, and to serve Him. I certainly agree with Deacon Joe. We are immensely blessed in this diocese because we are grounded in the Eucharist. Think of it. In every one of our churches and chapels, the risen Christ is reserved where we can come before Him for prayer, for contemplation, for comfort, for challenge. In Catholic education, our young people are privileged to spend six or seven hours Monday through Friday in a Catholic atmosphere, learning about all sorts of things, but essentially learning about their good God. Other vital ways that we can deepen our knowledge of God would include our Abide in Me program, Corsio, Tech, all of these Good works are ways we get to know God better. I am very happy to report that young men in growing numbers are considering ministry, priestly ministry, in our diocese. Vocations in this diocese for the priesthood and religious life actually point to the future. They are necessary for our life of faith. But so as well is the permanent diaconate and certainly Christian marriage. These are all ways that people may love and serve God and neighbor. Loving God is something we take out into the world in our diocese. It certainly has a lot to do with our Family Resource Center. Certainly the Men's Mass and March has meant a lot to help Catholic men grow in their faith. And one of our dreams from last year was to have a Catholic Charities mobile pantry. That's now a reality through your generosity. Catholics my age remember perhaps the old Baltimore Catechism where we were asked, why did God make you? And the answer we knew how to give, God made us to know, love, and serve Him. Thanks to your generosity, I believe the Catholic Diocese of Peoria is alive in the practice of knowing, loving, and serving our good God. So I thank you and I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.